Namaste. Well, I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to say. Uh, it's early, or actually late for me, 8 o'clock on a Friday evening. And I'm looking at the state of the channel and the community around the channel. And I have to say, I'm getting an attitude. <laughs> I'm not happy with it. I've been doing this now for like 12 years. And the original concept still stands. It was meant as a graduate level program in traditional Vedic and Buddhist spiritual wisdom. We started with existentialism and we went into the Buddha's teaching quite deeply. And then we went into the Vedic teachings, various different other teachings that are related to them. And uh, finishing up with Shaktism, Shaivism, and now Advaita and the Upanishads. And in all that, after all this time, not one serious student has approached me for personal guidance. Mm. Mango and papaya smoothie. Fresh fruits here in Sri Lanka are just amazing. It doesn't seem to me that anybody is actually following the channel in the way that we designed it, which is to start at the beginning, go through all the preliminary videos, and then follow the thread up until the present. I know there's a lot of videos, but we also have a video guide to show the structure of the channel, how it's based on the four stages of consciousness, and so on and so forth. But nobody seems to take any real interest in it. And I'm running out of time. You know, uh, I bought my ticket out of this world a long time ago. And I'm a goman. <laughs> you know, uh, they're coming to pick me up. <laughs> People tell me that I have a very youthful demeanor, considering that I'm 76 years old, or at least this body is. I'm much older than that. <laughs> but I have a youthful attitude. And I think attitude is, you know, more than half of being youthful. And how is that? Well, when a person's body is young and they're feeling strong and bulletproof, <laughs> they think they can do everything that their little heart desires. They have this kind of optimistic mood that, oh, there's plenty of time, I can do it all. You know, everything is cool. And they have a great degree of tolerance for different types of people and so on. Then as they get older, they start to discover that, wait a minute, the world seems to conspire against my dreams. Everything I try to do turns out differently than what I intended. And that uh, the longer I live, it seems like the farther I am, especially from some of the dreams that are very dear to my heart. So people start becoming, you know, a bit crusty. They start developing an attitude. <laughs> But, you know, I don't look at it that way. I look at it that this body is just a temporary home. And I am a wanderer by nature. Uh, in this life, I've gone, I don't know how many times around the world, literally, and visited. I, you know, I don't keep score. That's the thing. I follow my heart. I follow my interests. And when an opportunity comes, I go for it. Because I know, as an artist, when you get an opportunity, when you get an inspiration, if you don't act on it immediately, it tends to evaporate. 
So as an artist, then when I got opportunities for spiritual advancement, I jumped, man. I didn't even ask how high. You know, jump first, ask questions later. So I literally traveled to the native countries of the traditions and the teachers that I was studying. And if at all possible, I got to know them personally and so on. That's always been my modus operandi. And, you know, the, the biggest excuse that I get, which is bullshit excuse, but the biggest excuse I get from people when I say, well, you know, if you're interested in this teaching, come and, and you know, take a, take a room nearby and come and visit every day and I'll teach you. Oh, I couldn't do that. I have to make money. Why? You know? Oh, I need all this a car and uh, computers and this and that and blah, 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 blah. Well, if you think that the only way to make money is by working for somebody else, you'll always be in a state of poverty. <laughs> no, the real way to make money is to please God. If you please God, you give everything without even being asked. He knows, he knows or she knows if you're worshiping the goddess. So there's no need to even ask. Like there's this prayer, the, the Vanicum, uh, and uh, these other prayers uh, to Rudra, where they ask, give me this, give me that, give me money, give me a wife, give me a house, give me food, give me, give me, give me, give me. It's just nonsense. You know, if your God is genuine, he already knows what you need, and he knows what you are due by the law of karma. And he's not going to change his own rules. So the way to get wealth and other things is to have good karma. How do you do that? By pleasing God. How do you do that? By devotional service. According to your level of advancement in consciousness. Well, we've been over this a million times, but nobody listens. And nobody does it. That's the problem. But my whole life has been about listening to the teachings and the teachers, and doing what they recommended. That's why I am who I am today. And that's where my consciousness, or why my consciousness is where it is today. Because I listened and I did what they instructed. So I spent years living in temples as a poor brahmachari, doing devotional service. Then later on, after my Adi Guru passed away, I went outside and established my own household. Money just came. It like dropped out of the sky <laughs> effortlessly. Opportunities just landed in my lap. And when they stopped, I took what I had saved, went back to India and did some more. And then the same thing happened again, over and over and over. So I know, I know what makes wealth and I know what makes good fortune. But people don't want to follow the instructions. They don't want to follow the rules. They think because they don't understand why it is the way it is. They think that the Vedic guidance is somehow wrong and they refuse to follow the Vedic authority. And so, by rejecting the Vedic authority, they wind up with no authority, no rules, no standards to guide them in their lives. And they're just like wandering in the dark of ignorance. And so, is it any surprise that they come to grief, they come to suffering? 
That's the path to a lower birth in the next life. The path to a higher birth is to follow those instructions. And the very first instruction, yama niyama, what to do, what not to do. The very first item of yama, what to do, is to accept a spiritual master. So if you don't accept a spiritual master, I mean, you're lost. You're just lost. You have only your own opinion to guide you. And your own opinion is very, very faulty because it's based on limited experience. So anyway, nobody cares. Nobody's coming. And I'm running out of time. Like I said, they're coming to pick me up. I have an appointment. I'm going to be gone soon. I'm not going to say when, but it's not that far away. Now, I view it that this life is just a temporary thing and that my real life is in the higher worlds. And soon I'll be going back there and then there's no more concerns about scarcity or, <laughs> you know, companionship or any of that stuff because that place is full of enlightened people. And and there's no scarcity of food and other, you know, necessary items. Everything is there in a total abundance. No such thing as money, you know. It's unto, unto him according to his needs. And from him according to his abilities. It's a great ideal, but it only works in the spiritual world. It doesn't work in this world, which is so transactional. This is the world of the eaters and the eaten, the cheaters and the cheated, the bullies and their slaves. That's this world. So, I mean, if you have a chance to get out of this world, wouldn't you like jump at it? Wouldn't you like be on the next plane, you know, to wherever and whoever is giving you that kind of opportunity? I would, and I have been. I've done it. I've lived according to those principles. You know, you, you can ask anybody that knows me, although people usually don't get to know me for very long because I'm always on the move. <laughs> I'm a progressive person. I don't kick back and gather moss. You know, right now I'm the most settled that I've been in a long, long time. And I intend to just stay here until it's over. I'm taking my stand. But, you know, it's too late, really. If Even if anybody did want to approach me to become a disciple, <laughs> there's not enough time to decondition them from all the nonsense that's been drummed into them since birth by the stupid people around them. This, this world is 99.44% idiots. Until you realize that, you're always going to be misled. You're always going to give credence to things that deserve none. And the easiest way to tell is if something is popular Anything that's popular is automatically wrong. So, first of all, reject the popular, reject the conventional, reject the easy. Because the easy is also usually wrong. And master something. Get good at something. Go to the source material. Don't take anybody's opinion for it. Go to the source. Everybody's opinion has some bias. Like my opinion in saying it's too late to come and be a, a spiritual student with me uh, because we don't have enough time is based on my biases. Huh? That it takes years, in my opinion, to overcome the past, the conditioning, and actually begin to implement these teachings. That's my experience. In fact, from what I can see, the people today 
are even more conditioned, more ignorant, more set in their ways, more chained to the illusion than, than we were back when I was young. Hey, at least we had LSD and stuff like that to shake us loose from the apron strings of Maya. <laughs> and it worked. That's how I had my first glimpse of Brahman. And it really helped me to decondition myself from all the lies that I was taught. But anyway, it's all too late. Uh, it's water under the bridge. The game is over. Uh, there's no more time. Um, there's And there's no inclination on my part either to like start an ashram and be the house mother and take care of everybody's problems. And oh my God. I've done it, and it was horrible. And it was the really weirdest thing that here I was in a like group ashram with a dozen so-called disciples, and there I was in my office writing books and making the websites and videos and stuff, and I had made it very clear to everybody that I had open door policy Anybody was welcome at any time to come and ask me questions, and they did not. They didn't approach me. I was right there. All they had to do is knock on my door, but they didn't. It's the strangest darn thing in the world. And, you know, I can look at my astrology and say it's because of this and that, but, you know, really, the onus of spiritual progress is always on the student. The student has to take the initiative. The student has to go to the master and do whatever it takes to pass the master's test. And, and you know, <laughs> I come up with some pretty good tests. <laughs> Ask anyone... And any one of my failed disciples <laughs> that I'm a so unconventional and so outside the box, you know, like what box? <laughs> There's a box, really? Yes. And most of you are completely within that box. And you can't get out because you have not paid your debt to God. Every one of us is born with a karmic debt to not only the Supreme Lord, Ishwar, but to all the demigods for creating this world, stocking it with food and buildings and all the stuff we need, arranging the human society and controlling it and so on. But now, looks like death is setting up a big feast on this planet and within the next few years he is going to party down i'm out of here i'm going to leave before that all happens or maybe when it all happens but it's not far away the time is almost gone the the last ship has already left now it's just waiting the countdown to the final devastation. I'm sorry to sound so negative. To me, it's not negative. It's just the way it is. Because this has happened. Same thing has happened many, many times before in human society and on other planets. We have the proof, the records in the Puranas, but the cure for all of this is spiritual life, cultivation of sadhana. And nobody wants to do that. So I'm sorry. I can make the truth available, you know, but it's up to you to implement it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. I've given the water of truth here on this site for years now, but it's up to you 
to take the initiative to make it your own and practice it. And I don't see anybody who's actually done that. Nobody has contacted me and built a relationship with me and disclosed what's really on their minds and so on and so forth, which is what you have to do to gain the confidential instructions of a real spiritual master. So that's it. I'm sorry. Game over. Huh? And, uh, you know, I won't be here when you come back. I'll be there. So uh, it's up to you now. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.